Bitcoin has just exploded above $20,000. But what I want to ask is how much higher can this go? And this is not a normal video. I've got a very, very cool YouTuber here with me right here. Let me bring him up on screen. This is Mo XBT, a good friend of mine here in hey Dubai, a far better trader than me. Uh, mate, what's going on? How you doing, mate? How are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm Thank you very much. And no, I'm not a better trader than you. Definitely. Yeah, we're going to fight on this one. We're going to fight on this yep, one. We will. Um, <laughs> We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna be screen sharing this a little bit and just kind of talking through the chart so i'm gonna throw my chart up i want to give you guys a little bit of my analysis and mo's gonna jump in with his thoughts uh, a little bit later he's actually a day trader so far more active than i am and uh guys uh quite straightforward for me i've already got my resistance levels outlined a little bit above where we are right now i'm looking at uh this green uh, this orange box right here at about 21.6 stretching up to 21.7 uh we didn't quite hit this area of resistance yet so this is something that i'm expecting and you guys know that i absolutely love the Ichimoku cloud on the daily time frame and if we take a look at this it also lines up with resistance right here with this Ichimoku cloud so when we have multiple different indicators giving us resistance at the same points to me that represents what I called confluence uh so that's just multiple different indicators pointing to the same conclusion so this is going to be an important area to look out for above that i'm looking at 22.4 22.3 uh, and then this general area is basically where bitcoin topped out at previously so i think this could be resistance but honestly you guys have heard my thoughts if you've been subscribed to this youtube channel for a little bit shout out to those of you who are supporting the channel you know the deal uh you're gonna know that i've also been saying kind of 30,000, 28,000, very much on the cards as well but mo i'm curious to know what you think let me throw your screen up on here so you can take a look at the charts and and jump in and guys before i give it off to mo uh this guy has got some really really cool market insights you know i don't usually bring people onto this youtube channel and this is other than mdx crypto he's the only other guy that i've ever had on this youtube channel anton vase who is a real trader um and and i i mean i soak up what this guy says you know like he's actually helped me make some really cool decisions i wouldn't be bringing him on if i don't think that he's super super legit so go ahead and check his channel out it's going to be linked in the description as well over thank you, you Sammy. Thank you so much for your kind words, really. I don't think I deserve this much of uh, um, appreciation, but I really, really appreciate your work. And your and honestly, I only view, I only watch you and a little bit of uh, some other YouTubers, and I really, really love your work. Uh, but basically, I, I really, I'm, I'm really with you. Even I, I drew this from here, okay? Um, Approximately up, up around 21,600 as well, 21,800. And the reason, personally, I think so is usually, especially if we are uh, going around the range, right? Uh, gaps tend to be filled uh, most of the time, and we have a very big gap here. Uh, and here as well, we filled this one already, all right? And uh, the other reason is that I still think, personally, that we're still going to at least crush this area is to finally fill this gap around here. Um, and this is why I'm still holding. I also mentioned earlier that I went long in here. And the reason being is because I can see so much demand. Okay. Um, and it, it was very much obvious for me because when you see a lot of demand and at the same time you have some uh, gigantic uh, fair value gap here that needs to be filled, eventually it has to be filled. Um, and yeah, basically that's, I'm still basically holding my position, um, up around 300% with 24 X leverage. So, um, took some profits, but so far so good, still holding. This didn't really affect me. And the reason it didn't really affect me, this drop, uh, are two things. First is the Fibonacci retracements. So when you look at the Fibonacci retracements, it bounced exactly. Can we, can we declutter the, the chart pocket. a little bit? Cause it's quite messy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe use a different Bitcoin <laughs> chart. Okay, yeah, this so is cool. I removed all the joints. So um, the reason I didn't really uh, take, uh, sorry, I took profits approximately around here, okay, but I didn't really close my position because first of all, my stop is at break even. I, my entry is at 18,300. Um, and the other thing is because the 0 0.618, which is the golden pocket, it basically bounced from here right away from this um, area. So the good thing is that we see, we saw some demand uh, volume is okay. Um, uh, at least for now, I'm gonna wait and see how the reaction will be from here. Because look, so so, uh, so this me, this looks like we, we've we've temporarily bottomed then, yeah, because we hit the six on eight retracement. That's what you're saying. Yeah, in my opinion, yeah. Because I still think we cool. still have to fill this gap, but there's gonna be some um, interesting um, things that are going to happen that are gonna shake out a lot of traders before filling this gap. 
The whole idea is for it to not look too obvious that we're going to fill it, and then we end up filling it. So you think it can like throw us off a little bit more? Like we're not going to have a nice, easy, easy smooth, smooth kind of ride up there? Um, personally, yeah, because look, when, when resistance... Uh, when We spoke about this before as well. When, when resistance basically is... Uh, when it looks very bearish, it tends to continue. And when it looks very bullish... And I know this sounds a little bit confusing uh, for many viewers, but the case is, is that when resistance looks bullish, it tends to go down. And when resistance looks bearish, it tends to trick the bears into thinking that we're going to go down even further. And therefore, it builds a lot of liquidity in the market. And this is why shorts tend to get squeezed when things look bearish. Yeah, and actually right now we've got... Let me, let me take the screen real quick. We've actually got... Yeah. Um, uh, a beautiful kind of setup right here using mdxargo.com where uh, it looks like, yeah, there's more shorts in the market. So this is the first time I've seen this for a little bit. Uh, Binance is majority short, only by a little bit, but it's the first time we've seen this in quite a while. Bybit as well, FTX. The only exception I've seen to this is, um, there was one exception, what was it? And it was, it was BitGet. And, and BitGet was only 0.01% uh, more longs than shorts. So uh, it's very interesting that now that we've finally gotten a little bit of a rise up, we've fallen down to a 618 retracement, and all these really good things have happened for the market, now retail has taken up short positions, uh, which I think is, uh, is, is very, very curious as well. Yeah, charts on your screen, bro. Uh, yeah, fair enough. So, so exactly. So, uh, this one we, we filled, I cannot decide personally because I, I do day trade, so I can't really call for very, very big moves uh, until it really makes sense. As for now, I'm going to be taking profits here, at least most of it, and if, obviously, it goes there. And um, and then afterwards, we'll why, be able why to Why at 21.9? Uh, because, because here there is some resistance from this area, okay? And at the same time, it... it basically fills the gap that we're, we're waiting for in order for it to complete uh, uh, the range because when there's a range it's basically at fair value so when when there is a gap in, in the fair value we tend to basically uh, try to grab that liquidity there in order for us to be at a fair value that's why it's called a fair value gap because the gap is basically uh, still has to be filled in order for the price to be at fair value Okay, and these are gaps, um, just no, just normal gaps, like basically when the price moves too quickly, right? And it just kind of opens a little bit lower than where it closed, for example. Ex exactly. So right. so this is basically what happens. I, I, this is my, in general, it's my style of trading. I don't really uh, look much into anything other than gaps. I love to trade gaps. But uh, the, I think the art of trading is basically understanding when the gaps will be filled eventually. Because just because there was a gap that happen that doesn't mean it's just going to fill itself right away um, because when you look at bigger charts you'll see a lot of gaps like for example on the monthly chart uh, there are still all these gaps that haven't been filled so eventually um, we have to fill them whether it's this year or the next one uh, these gaps need to be filled what about the gaps that this are gap down at like 3,000 4,000 this is uh, this gap is technically filled with this drop okay um, there, there are gaps here, so if we get into a very depressive state for Bitcoin, then it makes sense for us to continue uh, and fill these gaps. And these gaps also, just one thing, these gaps are also considered as resistance. So once we reach into a very certain gap, uh, when it's red, it's basically considered as resistance. And when it's uh, green, it's considered as support or demand in it for that matter. You'll find a lot of bots here. Uh, waiting for it to reach that fair value in order for them to buy. And based on that volume, you'll understand if it's going to continue or not. But cool, that doesn't cool. always always work. So, um, But it's uh, for me, it's the best approach to trading. I've been trading like this for years. And uh, so far, it's been doing very well for me, to be honest. And so do you think that we're more likely to hit 21.8, 21.9 before kind of revisiting the $19,000 range again? Um, here's, here's the thing. I think we have to wait. Uh, tell me what you think. Because look, usually um, when we reach this area, if we keep getting rejected, 
uh, it's either going to end up building a lot of liquidity here if we're going to keep playing around like that, okay? Yep. Grab the liquidity and then go back down again. Um, but the whole idea, I think, right now, I there is not much gaps uh, down here. All of them have been filled. So I, I can't personally look into this and see and say that there is, we're going to go down. The only thing is yep. that I have to wait for this. And then based on how it's going to react, we can tell. What do you think? I like that, yeah. I mean, well, so there, there's a, those are good reasons for why the market might not revisit those lows. And um, just taking the chart back, by the way. Uh, and and yeah. the other thing that I like, actually, just, just to keep our faces on screen for now, is um, like what, what you've described are these much more um, technical reasons for why the market potentially has a higher probability of getting up. Um, but I'm also seeing fundamental reasons that are pointing to the same thing. You know, so I've been talking a lot on this YouTube channel about, um, you know, the dollar. You know, the dollar has been. I'm uh, just looking at it on on my side right here. It's it's dropped a lot, dude. I mean, you know, like it set a high. Let's let's throw this chart up. Actually, um, the the dollar set a high up here at uh, 114. We kind of came down. We're now in a trajectory of lower lows. Uh, you know, I said in my last video, subscribers will know this, that, you know, we could get a little bit of a rejection right here and then continue to trade down. Uh, you know, hopefully the dollar doesn't go up that high, but that definitely does look like something that's going to happen. The S&P 500 definitely is showing clear skies. Look at this. We were actually, we were just sat down in a cafe about, you know, an hour and a half ago. Uh, and I was showing you this, yeah. how the S&P 500 might be ready to swing above this high and that's already happened now so um there is this resistance area so i mean this could present a little bit of a problem but i think if we zoom out a little bit it's not that bad um where this resistance is actually it's pretty bad it's pretty bad what do you do you, do you think this is bad resistance bro you think this is resistance to be worried about that's for the s p i think um yeah i think here's the thing for the s p it, it really looks like it's following uh, really typical elliott waves so it, yeah uh, the thing is, um, I, I really haven't looked into it much, but what I, what I think is that there could be a resistance there. But there is also a gap that has to be filled for it as well, and we're basically approaching it. Um, the gap is right but, here. But, yeah, we, we've, we've filled 4, it right 000. now. There's one a little bit, yeah, at 4,000, approximately 4,098. And uh, if 4. it reaches 2. there... Sorry, go on. Sorry? I said another one's at 4.2, but yeah, go on. Yeah, and, and on top of that, uh, uh, if you look into the uh, VPVR, you'll also notice that we are under the point of control a little bit. So it could be oh, a very yeah. strong resistance there from a technical standpoint. That's good. Yeah, so there's a few spikes on the VPVR. I'm just going to drop them with a, f a couple lines here. This is getting very messy. Let me... Um uh, SPY is the same chart, right? Mm, SPX. No, I want a, uh, I want a different chart though. Yeah, this looks like the same chart. It is the same chart. S and P five hundred index. Yeah. Anyway, let's just give it a try. Oh, VPVR won't work here. Okay, sorry. Let me go back here and just clean up this chart a little bit because it's very difficult to understand what's going on. Uh, and just drop a couple lines to show where the VPVR is spiking. So uh, a couple resistance points here. This next one we haven't hit yet at 3,930. Uh, but then if we clear this resistance, this is a big jump up to 4.1. This is the next resistance on the VPVR that I'm seeing. Do you, do you, would, you, would you agree with that? Yeah, that's also where the gap is, that there's a missing gap that it still hasn't been filled. If you can... Uh Zoom in a little bit on the four uh, on the one hour. You're gonna see a gap uh, that basically hasn't been filled yet, which is approximately around this area as well, as you can see. Yeah, just a little bit so higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, exactly. So it could fill it, and then uh, based on the reaction there, we'll know what's gonna happen. And yeah, I mean, the it's, dollar it's as looking well, healthy, man. Right. It, it is looking healthy, but that's the thing, at least for me. Um, it's it, it's still like zooming out looks scarier than it is when it's zoomed in absolutely and and that that's the thing like as a trader you gotta as an analyst you gotta look at like okay the one hour time frame is saying this the four hour time frame let's see what the four hour time frame looks like four hour time frame also kind of looks like it, it needs a pullback you know or at least like some sort of because this has been up for you know i mean 
fuck me, 15 days, bro. 15 days we've been trending up for the S&P yeah. 500. Um, right here, it was it's trending kissing. up for 34. Yeah. It's kissing the EMA as well right now. So yeah. could, there could be a liquidity grab at least above the EMA, and then we can be able to tell even more. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So there definitely, definitely some signs that this thing could be ready to reverse. One hour is looking pretty right. good because we just got this pullback. But yeah, daily. Yeah, so it's 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 a bit of a... That's the thing. Like the, the signals were very clear that the S&P 500 would be rising like, I don't know, a week ago, you know, which is exactly when you and I were talking about this, um, yeah. you know, on our, on our YouTube channels. But now because that rise has already come, uh, you know, the, the picture is changing up a little bit. And, you know, kind of what I'm seeing for the dollar as well is going to be, I mean... It's still like, I mean, this is a pretty bad situation for the dollar overall. It's not seeming to look at this. It just kind of found resistance up here at 111 as well. Um, yeah. This was this was an area of a little bit of, yeah, we'd have to really zoom in. We're, we're, we're getting into your kind of time frames here, bro. But, um, yeah. But, but look, but yeah, there, the there thing was, is, if it's going to... If it's going to capitulate and if it's going to go extremely down, then uh, we're going to end up finding resistance areas of, of yep. closer to our uh, closer to our targets. So, so for example, uh, you can see there is one big gap there at one hundred eleven point six six three on the dollar as well. Hundred eleven. And that, yeah. So exactly at your resistance point as well, and which means where's the, the gap? Well, I don't see a gap. So the fair value gap, so this very, very big dip, okay, it's considered the gap. Throw it on, on your chart. Throw it on, on. Oh, this is considered a gap? Let's see it on your chart. Yeah. It's considered a fair value gap here. So Got you. this okay. is going to be, cons yeah, so this is going to be considered as a resistance as well. So even if we reach here, grab some liquidity basically. And then we could basically reject even further for the dollar. It's very, it seems, it, it seems logical for uh, for it to do that because look, um, remember we talked about structure as well. Um, we did break structure here, approximately. So if we're really on, if the dollar is really distributing right now, then it just needs to grab some liquidity, maybe fill a further gap here, and then continue down, and then we can s maybe start seeing a distribution pattern. I mean, hopefully, that would be really good for the markets. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think then Let's that the see. dollar is kind of poised to rise for the next like? I mean, it's gonna stop trading now, right? It's it's trading closes in about three and a half hours from the time of recording, uh, and then the weekend. I, I I think I think the thing is for the dollar. Uh, what I personally think is that. Um, the fact that they raised interest rate in order to reduce inflation, that, that could work for the short term. But is it really going to work is the question. Because to be honest, the Federal Reserve doesn't even know if it's going to work. It really depends on consumer confidence. It really depends on if um, consumers are just basically going to be taking, people are going to be taking loans or not. So if they're not going to be taking loans because inflation rate is too high, then the dollar should naturally drop, in my opinion. Can you can you can you say how that would result in the dollar dropping? So the fact that because look, the reason the dollar also goes up is because a lot of there is a lot of demand for it because everyone's asking for uh, loans. They're asking they want to buy houses. They want to buy all of that. So uh, it's natural for them to print in order to meet the demand. So when interest rates basically starts rising in order to reduce the inflation, um, this is what ends up happening is that no one will want to take loans anymore because the interest rates are very, very high. So what yep. ends up and, happening- And it's those loans that, that, that are, and, and just to clarify, it's when these loans are given out by banks, that's when the money is created, right? Exactly, because you need to meet the yeah. demand. They can't go and tell people, sorry, we don't have money. That's just scarier. So they end up having to print more money in order for them to meet all that demand. Yep, yep. So you're saying that if people stop taking loans because of high interest rates, that might result in the dollar dropping. And that, that's, that's basically what we've seen. We've seen mortgage rates like in the United States hit like 6 7%. Um, exactly. You know, so, so, so people... So, yep. Yeah, continue, continue. 
You're right. Yeah, no, I mean that it just it just makes mortgage payments more expensive. So people decide to, you know, they get a little bit less interested. Dollar gets weaker. Uh, inflation comes under control a little bit. So we see relief in the markets. Uh, and 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 that exactly. and that's an important. I think I think this is why we're starting to see moves up in the market for Bitcoin, S P five hundred, and so on. Is because um, these markets are trying to front run these things. You know, so like as soon as soon as this rumor of the Fed slowing this in, um, this interest rate hiking uh, came out. Markets immediately started to respond well, right? If you if you look at let me throw the chart up again. If you look at what happened on the uh, S and P five hundred last Friday, uh, and by the way, I want to talk to you about that. Last Friday, we um, where is it? Friday here. Uh, this is where the move started. This is where the move started, right? We were kind of trending down a little bit throughout this week. Monday open here. Uh, you know, we gapped up and then we fell right back down. Bam, Friday hits. This is where the rumor dropped in the market, maybe a little bit before. S&P 500 starts rallying up. We had a bullish Friday. We had a bullish everything up until kind of Wednesday. Uh, dropped for Thursday and Friday's up again. Uh, so a very good exactly. week overall, but it started to happen off this rumor. So this is people trying to front run the market. And let's actually throw on Bitcoin. Let's see how Bitcoin responded at that same time. Um, and we'll remove the VPVR because this is getting confusing. Yeah, so Bitcoin kind of started yeah. to rally up at the same time. Exactly. Bitcoin, um, yeah. I mean, it's this correlation, guys. I don't, I don't know why people still deny this. The correlation is extremely clear between Bitcoin and the S&P 500. It's just that Bitcoin moves in more explosive ways. But the S&P 500 is looking pretty good on this time frame. So, you know, so is Bitcoin. Naturally, you know what's also you know what's also interesting is that uh, on the S and P five hundred you'll notice um, on the drop that you were talking about earlier uh, a little bit down yeah so you'll see under it there is there is a very very, very big gap no 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 down a little bit yeah, exactly so here there is a little yeah, right uh, a, a, exactly so there is a big gap and that the fact that this gap didn't get filled although it was right next to it just indicates that there are just a lot of front runners in the market that expected that this is going to go further up. So when gaps tend to not get filled, it tends to, things tend to rally up very fast because everyone's trying to front run the other from a, from a gap perspective, basically. That, that explains why we've moved up so explosively then, which is, which exactly. is absolutely great. And then, okay, and then to bring it back to the market, just to kind of answer the title of the video. So we're looking at like how high this thing can go. Um, I th I think we've got a good amount of juice left, bro. You know, like the, one of the big things that I've been talking about is that we've we've had so little volatility for so long. Um, we've just come out of a kind of descending triangle. You know, we pumped out of it, which is less likely to happen in the first place anyway. Um, you know, if we kind of trace this back, it's been 35 days of absolute, absolute shit and, um, exactly. and 130 days of, of pretty shit, you know? So to now get a bit of a breakout towards the upside. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I even saw you. I was. I was extremely irritated, and I'm like, Sammy, this mm -hmm. is getting really irritating. <laughs> we were so irritated yeah. with the price action, but that indicates we, a, we, lot, we, a lot of accumulation as well. Yeah, it depends on if you're uh, an optimist or a pessimist, right? Someone's accumulating, someone's yeah. distributing, right? At the same time. Exactly. Could be. Yeah, yeah, and it. But what do you think? Don't you think this looks more like accumulation rather than distribution? Well, it happened after, uh, you know, it, it, it happened after what, like a 70% drop. Um, it happened at an extremely obvious support level. It happened when sentiment indexes were, were, were very low. Oh, we hit 30 now. We hit 32 yesterday. I haven't actually looked at this. Um, yeah, we're trending. 30 is fine, though. I mean, it did jump up a little bit faster than I wanted to, but this is still okay. We're, we're still in fear territory. Um, you know, so I think that um, I think this makes a lot of sense, man. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, like as as an accumulation, as an accumulation range, and and you know what, the the key thing I've kept on saying about this market is that people cannot simply fucking accept the idea that the market can rise right now. Like it's such an unfashionable thing to say. And we were talking about this over um, over over the shisha today. Um, you know, like, guys, I, I say this on this YouTube channel all the time. Like, I'm not here to make friends, right? I'm not here to, to like, make you guys agree with me or, um, you know, to, to get my likes up because, you know, you like what I'm saying or anything like that. It's never been that case. If you've been watching me going back to 2018, 2017, where I've been covering this crypto content, you know, I've not been here to, like, 
uh, you know, make everybody feel happy and agree with the majority. And the primary reason for that, guys, is because 90% of traders in this space are going to lose money. And fuck me, yeah, that means, that means a lot of people on YouTube are counting in that 90% too. You know, so when you find yourself in agreement with her, and this is why I say don't join like, um, you know, trading group chats and stuff like that. You know, like it's 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 totally pointless. You're not going to learn very much from them anyway, unless you happen to be in a really good one. And I promise you, I promise you, you're probably not in one. I'm not in a single trading group chat, by the way. Like I have my team chat and that's it, done. You know, and it's because in most of these group chats, if you find yourself agreeing, because it becomes like a camaraderie thing. It becomes like, okay, my boys are saying the same thing now, you know, potentially, you know what I mean? Like that's that's where you start to enter, uh, you know, very, very dangerous positions because 90% of people are going to lose money, you know? So if you find yourself having a nice kind of breezy social environment where everyone's agreeing with each other and everyone's kind of got similar ideas, good fucking luck. Good luck, because you know, you're probably not going to be on the right side of the market. Bam. Exactly. You know, I, I, I agree with you a lot with this because um, the thing is, that for me, in order for me to personally understand if these, because look, I, I don't swing trade a lot. I actually wanted to ask you if you think we're going to we're going to go up to 30 or 40, like based on your opinion. I, I really want to know that. I really want to know your opinion on that, because look, when when everyone is really, really negative about things, it tends to go. Um, this is when things go back up, especially when everyone because look, Recently, I've been hearing so many people talk about 12 and 14K um, a lot. And I, I was also thinking about it. But the, the moment I started hearing everybody talk about it, I started thinking, okay, wait, there, there, there could be a problem here. The fact that everybody is talking about it could indicate that uh, there's going to be some front runners in the market based on that. Twitter really, really helps with this. Actually, we could, oh, yeah. if, if the entire crypto Twitter space is, is extremely bearish, um, it, I, I really end up going long. But I really want to know yeah. from your side, Sammy. Honestly, what do you think? Do you think we are going to at least crush that? Just completely not see twenty thousand again or nineteen thousand again? Because oh. um, uh, I react based on uh, based on gaps. I don't really look much into into bigger bigger time frames. So I really want to know your opinion. No, yeah. And and that's and that's the cool thing, right? Because I'm kind of taking a slightly more zoomed out approach, but you're really good at these smaller more, you know, kind of tighter time frames and you've got these um and you're you're a day trader, right? To be a day trader in this kind of environment, you know, I mean, you, you you've got a different skill set. So that's really cool. That that's why I figured this is really going to be quite popular with the viewers. And by the way, just before I answer that, guys, if you think that this is a cool video, I want you to let me know in the comments if you want me to do stuff like this more often. We're now like 25 minutes into this video. We need to wrap it up soon, by the way. And, yeah. um, and, and you can tell that Mo is not like a normal kind of person that I'd usually have on this YouTube channel. So if this is something that you want to see more of, I need you to let me know. I need you to let me know by telling me in the comments, by smashing up that like button, subscribing to me, checking out Mo's channel, subscribing to him. He uploads like daily, by the way. Um, so that's well worth checking out as well. Uh, he's doing reactions on what's Just going on in the market actually. and so on. Go on. Yeah, I was saying I just started actually. Thanks to you, actually, you you forced me to start a YouTube channel. So yeah. thank you. Uh, from, from now, I'm telling you because I I just uh, barely any subscribers to be honest. Just started, so I hope you just like one point three k, right? One, yeah, one thousand three hundred, so. right? Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. let's let's pump them up, guys. I mean, yeah. It, what most of us is true. I've been sitting around with them having shishas and stuff like that, and I'm like, dude, people need to hear what you're saying. You know, because you look at the top YouTubers in the space. I'm not going to name call, but you guys know exactly who I'm talking about. These are not people that really know what's going on. They're just kind of jumping on hype trains and talking about one chat pattern and then bam, you know, like, you know what I mean? I'm not even going to get too deep into it because I like these guys anyway as friends, but we need like kind of more real voices in the space. And the thing about people like Mo is his channel is not going to be as explosive and fucking ADHD as the other guys that are super big, but that's exactly who you want to listen to. You know, you don't want to listen to people that are just really good at marketing. You want to listen to you want to listen to people like Mo that you know are actually like kind of in and out in the market, have a really good pulse on the market as well. So I think that's really important. And guys, before I continue here, Bitget is one of the exchanges that Mo and I are both using. Mo is actually a trader on Bitget as well, has been for quite a while. And I want to highlight these bonuses to you guys. If you want to sign up to Bitget, use one of the same exchanges that I'm using right here. This is a very reliable exchange, just right up there with Bybit. Like I said, guys, I use 
both of these. Uh, if you deposit over $4,000 and trade a little bit, this isn't too hard to achieve. You're going to be getting $400 for free. So this deposit isn't huge. I know not everybody can afford to do $4,000 for a deposit, but uh, certainly quite a good percentage of you guys watching this can. And you get $400 for free if you do that. Uh, you can trade with that money. You can do whatever you like with it. And crucially, you compare this to other bonuses that exchanges are offering. This one is very easy to get. The best part about BitGet, though, is regardless of where you are in the world, anywhere in the world, you don't need a VPN. You don't need to pass any KYC. Uh, you know, you can access this from anywhere on the planet. In fact, you don't need to be on the planet. I keep saying this. You could be anywhere with an <laughs> internet connection and, and you could use BitGet, which is absolutely fantastic. So go ahead and check it out, guys, because this is, a, um, th this is one of the exchanges that's a little bit newer on the scene, but they're making big moves. They really want me to tell you guys about their messy uh, collaboration. I don't know why people will care about that, but they're also partnering with big people. And the thing is, guys, this is quite a big trend that's going on in the space where Binance... Who did Binance partner with, bro? Uh, Binance? No, I think BitGet, uh, BitGet with Messi, right? Yeah, BitGet with Messi, Bybit with Messi. F1, uh, Red Bull. Uh, Binance Messi did a big thing recently as well. Uh, everyone's everyone's trying to like just throw cash. Like Binance. Yeah. Neither. I I hate which, Binance. By the yeah, way, yeah. which I hate Binance. Which by the way, when you see such big things happening, that just basically, um, when you see some big things happening like that with exchanges, kind of indicates to me from a from a different perspective that there is gonna be bigger accumulation eventually because there's they're pushing a lot on marketing. And by mm -hmm. the way, I, yeah, yeah. I really like I really like BitGet personally because honestly, it's the it's one of the only exchanges that don't have those crazy wicks uh, you see on other exchanges. I don't want to call these exchanges, but overall, BitGet really doesn't so great have for those day wicks. Traders. It could really, really uh, like it could really save you from liquidations a lot. It helped me a lot because I could uh, because I I usually uh, trade with more than one exchange. And for some reason, if I'm reaching stop loss or or anything, big get would be the last one that would hit, which kind of indicates to me that there the, there's not much big wicks compared to other exchanges as well. That's interesting. That's that's very cool. Yeah. So so better for day traders as well. Um, so yeah, exactly. guys, go ahead and check this out. It's linked down below. You're check getting a really cool bonus. Uh, Mo is on it. I'm on it. Uh, and, and Mo said it himself, by the way, he trades on multiple exchanges. I've been saying this for years as well. I've never heard anyone else say this uh, in the way that you and I have said this, but it's very important to use multiple exchanges purely to safeguard yourself, right? If, if, if being responsible with your money is something that you consider important to yourself, then why would you put all of your eggs in one basket? That's my question. And if you're getting paid to do it, if you're getting free money, whatever you do with this money is yours, right? If you make a profit with it, if you just YOLO this shit on 100x leverage and you make some money with it, you're taking that shit home, ladies and gents. Go ahead and check it out with the link in the description down below. But I want to answer your question here on this 28k thing. Um, you know, like I said, we've just come out of this area of quite low volatility. Uh, you know, so I think we are potentially due for a big rally. But what I'm not comfortable doing is making a big conclusion about going all the way up to $30,000, which at the moment is $9,500 away, instead of dropping down by 600, you know, because it's very easy for us to, um, to, to make that kind of drop right now. The risk to reward ratio is, is not in my favor, right? If we take a look at this um, and, and look at how likely we are to hit kind of 30K uh, or just kind of dip into the 19K range, I mean, it's a 0.07. You know, it's a really bad, like the, the odds are not in my favor to start speculating that, you know, we're definitely kind of going up super, super high. But, uh, you know, I've been pretty vocal about this since like, I mean, you know, I, I, I was similar to you. I didn't buy Bitcoin quite as low as you did. But, um, you know, I was telling VIP members uh, right here on screen that I decided to finally pull the trigger by Bitcoin down at 19.1. So, uh, you know, that wasn't too, uh, too high anyway. That's basically like right around this level is where I bought Bitcoin. I jumped into a long position around over here. Maybe, no, no, around over here is when I got into my long position. Position, um, you know, to ride this up with 10x leverage. And actually, guys, this position up to our current price is up by about 4.2%. Uh, but if you look at my leverage that I selected, bam, that's a 10x. So again, not as much leverage as you selected, Mo, but that is still a 42% profit. And you guys know the drill. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good if this job, is something man. that you want to get yourself into, go ahead and check out the first link in the description down below. Bam, at four flies, bam, send message. I want to remind you guys, yearly members get phone calls with me anytime you like. We've just had uh, someone else's about 
about to join our yearly plan today. So uh, shout out to those of you who are in there uh, chilling with me inside of VIP. We've been slaying these markets. Mo's been slaying these markets uh, and, uh, and we're here to stay as well. But bringing it back to that 20K question, I'm sorry, that 30K question. Um, you know, look, I don't think it's going to be too hard for hype to set in into this market. And I think we've got the perfect setup for it. You know, for me, the fundamental question is very important because this is not going to be, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's no it's no small deal if Bitcoin kind of gets up to like 30K, right? This is going to be a pretty big deal in my opinion. And so I think that we need a lot of, um, how do I say, like pins to be set up in our favor before we throw this ball. And I think that we've got that now, you know, with the dollar being in a downtrend. Look at this. This is looking like quite a rejection now. Did this just happen? Oh, no, no. Um, you know, so the dollar is, um, is is potentially just finding a little bit of resistance. Yeah, sure, it can go up, but it's probably just going to continue to find resistance. It's already shown some really bad signs that we know why this is happening. This is happening because of this news with the Fed where the interest rate hikes might be paused or slowed down. Um, S&P 500 is looking pretty good overall, actually continuing to move up just while we're recording. Um, yeah, just kind of right at the, the range uh, at the day's highs right now. Uh, you know, and, and at the same time, I mean, you look at the kind of optimism that's in the altcoin market. Look at Ethereum against Bitcoin, really just shooting up very, very high. Uh, altcoins overall outperforming Bitcoin right now. It's a it's a good market environment, ladies and gents. I mean, there's there's volume too. You know, you were saying it yourself. I, what I really liked was this chart. I don't know how reliable this uh, volume reporting was, but if you take a look at, oh no, it's not happening on this chart. I've, I've lost it now. Um, yeah, it was just the Coinbase chart, actually, I think that was showing this where, and, and this is the same thing that you highlighted earlier, where you can see like each time we're getting these moves to the upside, it's our green volume that's peaking, even on this leg yeah. right here. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. Um, I want to I wanna talk about the downside, though. What happens if we're wrong? Like, you know, do, do you think we, we're looking at a situation where we can kind of, you know, rip a little bit deeper into the 19K range? Let's throw your chart back up. Uh, going back to the 19K range, I, I haven't really looked into it much. I looked at the... Here's the thing. Um, if we're going to go back down, okay, unless we see uh, further... Because of the weekend is coming, so the weekend is going to be very, very uh, interesting. This is what I'm waiting for. Because look, Sundays, especially Sundays, um, you'll see some really crazy action. And on Sunday, you'll be able to even tell if Monday is going to react based on that or not. Because on Sundays, it's not as li as liquid as Monday. It's good. It's very illiquid. So you'll be able to understand if the liquidity is more to the upside or the downside. So personally, I, I, I don't know until I see Sunday. I, I really can't wait for Sunday because Sunday could help us understand if um, there's a lot of shorts or longs. Because the fact that no one is really, the institu institutions are not really trading much on the weekends. So you'll end up finding a lot of uh, liquidity grabs throughout. And based on these liquidity grabs, we'll be able to understand if a lot of people are long or short and which side it's going uh, to benefit Mondays and institutions, basically. There's a lot of manipulations on the weekends. And I've been seeing it a lot. Um, I remember I even okay. spoke to you. I told you, I'm like, Sammy, Sunday, Sunday something is going to happen. Like, it has to happen. We will we'll know. I think it's going to go up. Like, we kept talking about it. And we both, even me and Sammy, bought Bitcoin approximately at the same time. Spoke about it. I'm like, Sammy, should we buy? He's like, yep, let's buy. We bought and it flew up right after. So, uh, so yeah. It's uh, the timing I, that's impressive, think, right? Because we could have bought... Yeah. We could have bought at that level for like a month, but we did it like just days before the pump exactly. actually happened. Exactly. So that's good. That's good that we managed to do so. And on Sunday, I think um, we'll. I'll see you again. We'll, we'll talk. We'll see what uh, what it's, what's going to happen. But for now, guys, if you want me to get Mo. Guys, if, if you want me to get Mo back on this YouTube channel for Sunday, let me know in the comments down below and by throwing up a like right here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much. Cool, bro. Did you want to add anything else? We're, we've, this is a pretty long video. This could have been a live stream. Yeah, actually. it is. No, no. So far, so far, so good. Uh, thank you for having me, man. Thank you so much for having for me. For sure, My dude. first time I ever go online with people. I'm usually a very big introvert. I I have been just trading for a living. And um, and right now, I've been... Everybody's been basically telling me, go ahead and start a YouTube channel. And here I am. Yeah.
Yeah, well, th this is this is what I was saying, right? Like, again, we, we go back to this, like, who do you want to listen to in the market? I want to listen to an introvert, man. I want to listen to someone with your kind of hair, just chilling. Thank you. you know what I mean? Like, so, someone, someone that looks like you, someone that speaks like you. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be hearing from the kind of people that are like, hey, look at my fucking, you know, my, my private jet and... And, you know, like, I'm just making this video for my Lamborghini today. Like, fuck that shit. Like, I want to I wanna hear the guy that's quiet and that's, like, you know, <laughs> looking at his screen more often and stuff like that. This is, this is the thing. We need more of this to be big on YouTube. And, um, and, and that's why I really hope that you keep making videos. And if you want him to keep making videos, because, guys, he's helping me, too. If you like my analysis, I'm, I'm, I'm getting help from him, ladies and gents. If you want that, go ahead and check him out. Like I said, he's linked down below. Uh, you're probably going to be seeing a lot more of them on the channel. If you want that, let me know. If you don't want that, let me know. I need your comments down below. Guys, thank you all so much. One more time, I want to highlight this amazing offer from BitGet to you guys. You're getting a very, very easy bonus right here. You don't need to do very much to achieve it. And you can trade with this money and take any profits you make back home. There's no KYC required, no VPN anywhere in the world. Withdrawal limits are very high. By the way, I checked it again today. I think the withdrawal limit's like 20 Bitcoin per day and i haven't done kyc myself so unless you're rocking with more than 20 fucking bitcoins a day that you need to be withdrawn you're gonna be perfectly <laughs> fine uh go ahead and check it out in certain territories bitget might say that you know you can't use it um or, or it might just say it's a restricted territory it won't say you can't use it it'll say it's a restricted territory that's fine you can still go ahead uh in the future you might need to use a vpn but right now guys it's totally fine it's all working very very well so go ahead and check it out with that link down below you already know the deal if you want to get inside a vip guys do me a favor throw up a like subscribe and tick the bell as well to this youtube channel go ahead and check out mo as well with the description and i'll see you all in the next one cheers peace